Welcome to this DTS support video. Here we're going to be doing basically a overview um, explanation of version 9, the um, sports tech released upgrade that came out recently. We're going to be running through the features that they had. We'll be focusing on the game breaker features and um, this isn't a applications video so we won't go too in depth but wanted to give you an idea of what's in there, um, what you need to have to upgrade to 9 and some of those kind of uh, that that information that sh will be helpful um, in the decisions that you make. So, first off, version nine. You do need to have version nine when you buy a new Mac. The reason is new Macs come with Mountain Lion, which is 10.8. You do need um, version nine. There are bugs when using earlier versions of Sports Code. On uh, so if you're running a version eight code or seven code and trying to put it on a new Mac. There could be bugs that the um, support recommendation will be to upgrade. Um, also, if you're um, you have a version nine code and you're trying to put it on an older Mac, same thing. You'll have bugs that um, you'll the, the way to rectify them is upgrade to this. The way to upgrade is to get um, you can go to iTunes or the App Store, which is located on your Mac. Let's see, I'll just flip to it real quick the app store here uh, sometimes they're on the dock by default I've removed mine so it's in here open that um, and you can find the mountain lion it takes took me uh, about an hour to download and maybe another hour to install it I didn't have to do anything Mac did it all once I downloaded it um, if you're coming from I believe if you're coming from snow snow leopard um, it's or earlier it is like 50 bucks because you have to do an incremental upgrade um, from those to Lion and then to Mountain Lion. If you're coming from Lion to Mountain Lion, it's uh, 20 bucks. So uh, that's just the way technology goes. As development goes, there's costs and uh, a need to do that. And you also get the benefit of future development. So that's what you need to do. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, to get version 9 on. Um, now let's get running through here. Again, I'm in sports code. Um, I'm going to run through. Let's. We'll first start on our... Uh, oh, if you want some additional information, you can go to Sports Tech site and look at their products. Here's uh, kind of a brief thing. I've actually found some more in here. I don't know if that means I wasn't using them before or uh, there's just a lot in there that they don't have listed out, but if you want more information you can go to their their website so um, but here's what I found so we're gonna start in our preferences and first in this I wanted to show you is this check for updates which is really cool um, before when you get an update from like uh, when we were in like 8.5 and then there's an update to 8.6 you you weren't notified uh, unless you got an email from us or went to their website so now that's automatically you're automatically notified that there's an update and it will install uh, kind of like what you're used to with um, some other software out there but I really like that it makes it easier um, keeps you guys up to date on what's going on um, so that's there and we'll get into uh, the preferences there's a few here um, a lot of sim it's been simplified some of these menus um, one thing here is um, I don't have my other screen plugged in, but if you're connecting to like a TV or a projector, you can put the full screen automatically on that other screen. So I love it. As far as when you're presenting to another screen, it makes it a whole lot easier and cleaner to do that. Um, so hopefully we'll get some videos out to more show that. Capture, uh, not, nothing really changed. It, it got cleaned up. Communication isn't relevant. Overlay text, I'll show you this real, um, later more what it is, but um, you can have overlay text as well as instance notes. They are a little bit different. You can change the background. You got more kind of a cleaner way to mess with them. You can also put time shown on your video, which I think will be more relevant as far as time code. I mean, again, uh, depends on what information is important to you, but if you use it as a time code stamp, It'll, it should, I believe, show you, if I understand it right, um, the uh, time of game that events occur. So that's what I believe it, it does, and you can move it around on the screen. 
um, and have some display options there. Um, Apple Remote, the the uh, Apple changed their remote from the old white one to this more silver one, and they changed their button layouts around. So it's uh, I think it's great that Sports Tech updated these. So there's a button in the middle that we weren't able to do anything with, and these buttons kind of got a little funky. So now they've updated this stuff so that will give you some more buttons if you're using this remote to do uh, presenting or even coding and things so I like those nothing there just they they cleaned up some options uh, there's nothing really completely new there's this though that they save the timeline as an XML file um, as far as searching doing searches which we'll cover in a little bit that's helpful um, It'll be interesting to see where this development goes. I know XML is used for websites. Um, you use XML with Coda, which is another sports tech product. So um, it sounds like there's a unification of those and should uh, lead to some easier workflows um, and some new cool developments down the road. But um, that's, that's what that is. So that is your preferences. Um, now we're going to get into our code window. A lot of, uh, seems like a lot of development time was spent on this. Um, which is helpful. Um, first off, you can right click and customize. And um, I never used these buttons, these clear and reset buttons. Um, so getting rid of them, I like. Let's see if I can. Mm, customize toolbar. There we go. Got to just remember. So I don't use these really. Um, there's some free spaces in here. I, I don't want to. I want to get rid of them. Um, yeah, we need all these. So, if you like them, I I do this sometimes text because I can see them. I really don't need this other stuff, but you can uh, check the different sizes. You know, which is good depending on what you want to do. I like this. The links below. When you're setting up exclusive links, um, oftentimes when you had them linked in there, um, you knew what was linked and you didn't want to see them, but you just were left with these ugly lines everywhere. So having this flexibility is really nice. Um, settings, uh, nothing really. Um, but this is the big piece that they changed. So inspector is basically your um, edit button window, which used to pop up when you double click on a button like that. So um, we'll go through this real quick again not really application but it's just a little difference you know, with some exploration I'm sure if you have experience with Gamebird you could figure it out on your own but code is setting up your your top um, your on offs your red diamonds and green diamonds that's what this is there's a lead and lag and you can name it inactive is basically just um, some background and deck um, some uh, organization of your code window so that's what inactive is it means it, it doesn't actually create clips hotkey should be self-explanatory tooltip um, I guess if you wanna you know maybe a assistant is coding or a, a volunteer and you want them to know what exactly the button is for you could put in some information there um, exclusive link this is how it's linked now so if we bring down another button you link it to two so you can see it's not there. Really like that. But anyway, so there's a, that's how you exclusive link. And this is the appearance. A lot more cool things in here. Um, I love that you can control, you have more control over the size. Before it was a kind of a little hidden, difficult to see. So I like these handles. I like that you can uh, set the, uh, let's see if we move these down. Sometimes lining up buttons, you know, I get a little OCD on those and I really want them exactly lined up. So um, if you select this, you know, and you want them, bam, perfectly lined up. And obviously, you can uh, check. Let's do make them exactly the same. So I really like that. I think it makes for an easier build. Really like like that a lot. Um, you have the normals, stroke, background. Uh, stroke width, uh, these things are all the same. The next thing that is great is the images are a lot easier to use. So I can just click and drag in here, and I got handles. So before you'd have to use like a graphics editor if you put in an image and it was too 
you know, bring in a player's face and it was too tiny, you'd have to get a graphic editor or go back and do multiple steps. So I really like this edition. I'm hoping in, because uh, Coda, they have a, a tool called Slice Tool, which will allow you to cut this um, into, you know, multiple buttons very easily. I hope they bring that in and it seems like the direction they're going. Um, but for now, that still really cool so bringing in players faces and things another thing you can do is let's say we don't want that button you could bring the image in here easy enough and do that so images are really really cool so uh, finally one thing I've noticed that I really like as well let's show these so let's say you put all your defensive plays together and you want them all linked and then you want to copy the same idea over to from offensive to defensive before you would lose your linking and now they copy over, so all that linking just makes it again. You don't have to click on through. Love that. Really think that, again, makes makes life easier. These are the same code capture. I use the tiny ones. Um, this is the opacity that's been there before, but just in case you didn't know. So that's the code window. Um, like the direction, sports text going with those. Um, a lot more user-friendly and uh, clean and good that way. So, all right. We're going to go into uh, the timeline. So again, like that you can customize these. As you can see, I have uh, the text only, um, and you have you know you can drop in the different things that you want or don't want. Um, so that's it. The settings typically is over here on the right, and I've moved it over to the left because the reason is where they've put the merge sequential and selection is now hidden under or contained within the settings area. So it used to be over here in a white box. So that's where this is. It also has now kind of combined or put together your instance and overlays all underneath there. So um, overlays is a new feature brought down. It used to be only in Pro and Elite, so they brought that down. And what that does is when you have it, instead of um, instance notes, which would be a big block over here, um, floating and you can put some other things in there overlay just gives you this information and if we go back to our preferences I like that you can change the opacity like that so it's not completely uh, blocking your video of what you want to see so I like that I like you can change the font size and the background if you do or do not want it so a lot of uh, cool things you can do with that just to make your video presentation nice and uh, exactly and informative to what you want and I'm sure there's more things I'll be that'll be coming out here that uh, we'll learn as I get more into the version 9 stuff um, but for now that's what we got um, what else have we got oh I did that oh one thing that I saw in the website is gestures um, I don't have a list of what those mean but I do know like I'm using gestures now by pinching and expanding my fingers on my trackpad, which which is neat. I like that. Before you'd have to do down here, um, which just I don't know. It just makes it easier. Um, I, I like I said I don't know what other lists they are, but if you uh, want to check out some that exist on the machine, you may or may not know. You can get into preferences and trackpad, and there's gestures here, and there's a neat little video showing you what exactly they do. Some apply, some don't. Um, let's see which one did I learn oh show desktop I found this the other day I like that when I'm working with video if I save one to my desktop so that's one I've put in place um, I also found a neat little app to si it get sidetracked a l just a tiny bit um, it's called the better touch tool gives you a lot more control over the gestures if you like that I use a mouse um, but if you use the trackpad a lot, I would look into this. It's worth kind of looking at some of the tasks that you have to do over and over that you'd like to, hey, if I could just swipe my hand, I could um, do something. Um, and I have that here on my computer. So here it is. You can set it to application specific. Um, and what I did was I take the three fingers and that actually does my presentation to full screen. So. Um, I haven't, this video is not to explain this whole thing, obviously, but, um, if you wanted here, here's just brief, like all the different options. Look at them all. There's tons of them. 
and you can set that to keyboard shortcut or certain different actions. So um, I like those for the, the gestures part. Um, we'll see what sports tech, if we get a list of exactly what the different things you can do here in the timeline. Um, the find feature, which I believe has been in there before, but they say it's new, so um, I'm assuming that means they've done some uh, improvements on it. I did like this. Uh, timeline's in a folder, so I have, speaking of gestures, I'll do one now to get to my desktop. Um, I put all my two matches in my 2012 folder, and you can find that folder. It might be on an external, which was nice, so if you're storing them somewhere. And... Um, uh, so what I want to do is I have two matches in there, and I'll just use cross. Yeah, you can see recent searches that are saved. So this is the XML. So one of the benefits of the development is XML format will improve speed of future searches. So that's that's nice. Again, some of those things that you find out are benefits. I'm just going to keep old. Um, I should mention that what this is is an old uh, I made, or this Game Breaker package was made, I think, on version 8 so if you were wondering hey if I go to 9 will 8 work yes they all work um, so if I do a search for cross it gives me all these I can either open them all together these are the names of the timeline so you know you want to you know again we, we'll get into details more but basically you know you can watch them all and this will open the package actually by doing that so there's multiple rows that'll open them all you can open the package, open file, that'll open that one, or you can take it one at a time. Really cool. So we'll see what else that, that can do in, in future things, database them, things like that. Um, so that's that. Um, this is cool. I really, uh, another thing, let's say you've got, um, you got some players coming in and you have them broken down. Rather than saving each of those, I think this is a huge time saver here you can export to selected timeline. So what that means is it's going to take each of these and you can either do it by standalone or reference, row or instance. So if you wanted each of these individual clips to be a movie, that would be instance. Uh, I just want each one of these players are going to come in, so I want their movies. Set where I want it and export. So there you go. We'll do our little gestures, maybe. Get, nope. Get to the, there we go. All right, and here they are. Already done, so that player comes in. All right, so that's the idea of that. Uh, big time saver, oops, sorry. Big time saver, so those are some things that you're, the, the workflow things you're doing. Um, and then the other is that I like, I didn't understand why it would do it before, was it when you're doing save as. Before, it wouldn't remember your choices so it'll remember now and be this so if we do uh, I might have to uh, let's just save it see what happens alright so we did a save as standalone save as so you can see it remembers it um, I think it's good because you might forget or you know it's just one of those Efficiency things that sports tech continues to help you save time on even in the little things that just kind of add up So that is a quick again quick overview of version 9 um, the Additions and development that's been done by sports tech a lot of them are very helpful very clean um, becoming got some more good interface going on so I think version 9 is a good thing to take a look at and consider uh, the biggest piece is um or at least, no, again, you need to be, if you're in buying a new Mac, you will need to upgrade to version 9. Um, if you are in an older um, Mac version, you cannot go to version 9. So if you're on uh, Mountain, uh, Mountain or Lion might work, which is 10.7, but again, I had some bugs. I actually just updated to 10.8 um, yesterday because I was trying to put this video together and things work, weren't working in 9. Like the instance export wasn't working. Um, I had a couple of um, functions that just weren't doing what normally they would do. So, But when I updated, all that was taken care of. So if you're in 10.7 or earlier you'll and you want a version 9, you will need to up, upgrade again. And the cost is guesstimate, either 50 or 20 bucks. Easy to do. Um, so there you go. 
hopefully that helps. If that's something you want to take a look at, see if it fits for you, or um, got some questions, please email support at dtsvideo.com. Till the next video, have a good one.